A function is a program that is executed when input arguments are provided. The program usually returns an output argument, or a list of output arguments. For example, the plus function takes two inputs and returns a single output. The size function takes only one input, but it can return either one output or two outputs depending on the way that the function is used. In this video, we'll learn to create our own functions. We're already quite close to doing so, having created script files to execute a sequence of statements. For instance, having written a script to test the discriminant, I can execute the code from the command window by typing the name of the script file. This script is asking me to enter coefficients for a, b and c. The file needs to be in a location where MATLAB can find it, normally in the current working directory. The behaviour of the file when it's executed is quite like a function, but with no inputs and no outputs. We collected the values of the coefficients using explicit input statements, which in the file were entered here. And then we simply printed the results on the screen. The program could have been implemented using a nested if statement, but here I added two scalar logical values to find the number of roots, and I used this number as a switch to print different responses. To make this into a proper function, we want to set it up so that it can be used as follows. We'll type my discriminant as the function name and enter the input arguments straight away. The result should be returned as a variable. I'm going to call the result numRealRoots. To do this, we need to add a line to the beginning of our script file, which designates that the script is to be used as a function. Then, after a space, we type the output arguments in array form. Followed by an equals. Since this array has only one element, we can drop the square brackets. What comes next is the function name. This must match the file name, because when we call a function by using its name in the command window, MATLAB first searches for a file with that name in the directory. We include a list of input arguments to show how the function is to be used. In this case, a, b and c are the coefficients. Now we can delete the lines for inputting a, b and c here, because they will be collected by the function when it's called. I'm also going to get rid of this line, for reasons that will become clear later. So now, returning to the command window after saving this, if I simply type my discriminant, I'll receive an error, because I didn't provide any input arguments. My discriminant 1 for 4 takes a equals 1, b equals 4, and c equals 4 in the program. This function has been set up to accept three inputs. So my discriminant 1, 4 and my discriminant 1, 4, 4, 5 both fail because of the wrong number of inputs. 
It is possible to set up functions which can accept variable numbers of inputs, like the size and plot functions, but doing so is beyond the scope of this video. Now, looking back at the script file for my discriminant, we can see that MATLAB has highlighted an error. Notably, the output for numreal roots is not defined in the script, so this is a mistake. If I go back to the command window and try to get numreal roots this way, MATLAB will return an error because the output hasn't been assigned. This is easy to fix. Instead of displaying a message here using switch, we'll simply designate this variable to be num real roots. It's very important to include the semicolons here. We don't want additional variables to interfere with the results that are returned by the function. For example, if I forget the semicolons here and here, MATLAB does warn us, and when we go back to the command window and try to execute the function, we'll end up with several results being printed on the screen, in addition to the final answer. Compare this with the inbuilt functions, such as tan, which, when we ask for a result, gives us only that answer with no unhelpful clutter. Adding the semicolons back in, we'll only get the result that we want. It's worth noting that the function line provides a pattern for the inputs and outputs. Whatever we enter in these three slots are taken as the inputs A, B and C, and the result numreal roots is returned in the output slot. We can call the outputs whatever we want in the command window. The polynomial with these coefficients has no real roots. Our function is nearly complete, but it's still missing a description. All functions should have a description, like those for the inbuilt functions that can be accessed by typing help. We can add a description for our function in the line immediately below the function line, using the comment symbol. When we return to the command window, we can type help my discriminant to get our helpful message. A function description should normally start by showing how the function can be used, and by defining the input and output variables. <coughs> and that's it, you're now ready to start creating your own functions. I'll just recap the crucial points to finish off. The function header line must look like this. We designate the file type and we show the usage pattern. The function name must match the file name. Inputs are collected by the usage pattern, so defining input variables in the script is nearly always wrong. Notice that MATLAB does actually display a warning message here. Outputs must be returned by the function, and the function needs a description. The function should not print out unnecessary intermediate results. <coughs>